So there's been a brand new update to Logic version 10.8. There's a whole host of new features in there, including the Mastering Assistant, which is a very powerful mastering tool. There's the Beat Breaker, which does a lot of time-based effects, stuttering glitches, and things like that. There's some new tools, the Slip Tool and the Rotate Tool, and there's been an update to Drummer, so it can be utilized a lot better with other drum samplers like the Native Instruments Contact Library. But the biggest part of this update, the one that's most exciting to me, is the Alchemy Sampler. The Sample Alchemy. Yeah, it's such a weird name. Surely it should be Alchemy Sample. I don't know. And already inside of Alchemy, the synthesizer, there used to be a lot of these features, and this is just an easy way of using Alchemy for things like granular synthesis, which Logic has been missing for a long time. With Ableton, it came with Granulator 2, which is probably one of the best granular synths out there. But Logic's now trying to take that spot and with a stock granular synth, which has a lot of powerful features. So I wanted to show you that today. So to load the plugin in, we need to go into our list of plugins and go down to Sample Alchemy. So this is very similar to a sampler where we need to load an audio file in to actually create and generate tones. So I've got a few samples here, two chord samples that play a chord sequence, and then two samples that have individual notes. These are all from Apple Loops, by the way, not from my sample library. And then the final two. Essentially a monophonic instrument. So first of all, I'm gonna load our chord sample into here just by dragging and dropping it. Now let's just get started by pressing a key. And it kind of sounds like the plugin is just playing through the audio file just like a regular sampler. But in actual fact, it's using granular synthesis to play this sample back because I can change the playback speed down here in the bottom left. Now we go through granular synthesis in our sound design and synthesis course online. The links will be in the description if you wanna take a look at that. But today we're just gonna talk really about this plugin. But to give you a short summary of granular synthesis, it's this idea of playing back multiple different copies of one audio file overlapped with each other in a very short space of time. At the top here, we have five different modes for our playback of this loop. The classic mode is what we're in now. And this is just gonna play through the sample and we can move the start point around by clicking on our A here. And you see it will also snap to our transients within the waveform. The loop will do the same thing, but when it gets to this end marker here, the sample is gonna return back to the beginning again. But these last three modes here are slightly different to this classic and loop, starting with the scrub. And the scrub mode is very similar to what a normal granular synthesizer would behave like. It doesn't play through the waveform. And it's as if you can freeze time in that audio file and just hold one specific moment in time. The bow is very similar to the scrub, but as you'll see, It's kind of like the loop effect, but it bounces forward and back, forward and back, as if you were bowing a string. And finally, the ARP will apply an arpeggiator effect to your notes incoming into the synth. And it's also gonna do some other interesting things later on, which we'll come back to. But when you change through each of these modes at the top, this parameter in the bottom left-hand corner will change depending on the mode. So in classic mode, we have our playback speed. In loop mode, we'll also have the same playback speed too with the loop though. In the scrub mode, we'll get this scrub jitter. Scrub generally holds one position. Or if you turn that jitter dial up, it will slightly move the position back and forward.
leading to those very slight changes in tone as it moves forward and back in time. The bow will have the bow rate, which at the moment is synced, as you can see at the top here. So it's gonna bow in time with our project tempo. And the ARP also has the ARP rate. Let's see what this will do, just with one note. Looking at the rest of this section down here in the bottom left hand corner, we have some fairly standard controls that you'll get in a sampler. The pan, tuning controls, a coarse tune in semitones. And then we've got a fine tune in sense. So let's move on to the synthesis mode. By default, we are set to the granular synthesis mode, which is probably my favorite out of the three. And this uses granular synthesis, so we get very common granular synthesis controls like size, density, the number of grains we can use, random time, which will randomize the size control over here, I believe anyway. So individual grains will have slightly different sizes and that will be randomized. So our first grain could be 150 milliseconds long and the second one could be 140. And then random pan as well, same idea. Each of the grains can be panned randomly to the left and right speaker or anywhere in between. A great feature for making things sound nice and wide. In the other two modes, we have additive and spectral synthesis. Let's switch over to additive now. Additive synthesis, it recreates the waveform using individual sine waves and stacks them at different frequencies on top of each other to recreate the waveform that we have selected where our position is here. So it doesn't have any of that wobbly feel that granular synthesis does because it's just reading the waveform at that given point and it lets you play that back as if it was a synthesizer waveform. It's a few interesting controls to play around with in here like symmetry, the balance between odd and even harmonics, pitch variance, which uh, sounds a bit interesting. The number of partials, so this is how it splits up your frequency spectrum. Basically, the lower the number, the less detailed your waveform will be. You also get a bunch of different options, and we're not going to go through them all, but they have some very interesting results. And if we turn this back onto classic, just to compare. just has a slightly different feel to the granular option before. Feels a little bit cleaner overall. Let's go to spectral. Spectral synthesis is similar to additive synthesis in the way that it uses sine waves to create the waveform, but it also uses noise and filtered noise signals, and it behaves in a similar way to a vocoder. So you'll see this feature here, this dial called shift. Which will shift the formant, because we're on the formant setting at the moment, up and down. You'll get this a lot in vocal pitch plugins too. But to be honest, you can just pick one of these settings. They're all going to sound great and they're all going to do some really interesting things to your audio file. And one of the really powerful things about this alchemy sample is up here in the top left hand corner. Now, in most granular synthesizers, one set of settings, because this uses the alchemy synthesizer engine, you can actually have up to four different granular engines. If we click on B there, it's now loaded up a second position for us. And the amazing thing about this is all of these settings in here are independent. We could have B set to granular or we could change it over to additive and have a mixture of granular synthesis on A and additive synthesis on B. We could also have C and D as well. So 
So some other interesting things about the plugin in the bottom right hand corner, we have a filter section. We need to turn the filter on by clicking the power button in the top right there. And the filter at the moment is set to global and it means it's gonna affect each of our generators here, A, B, C, and D. But if we turn this off, then we can have a separate filter for each of our generators, as you can see there. In the top right hand corner, we have our envelopes, which aren't super obvious. It would have been nice if these had their own menu somewhere. Uh, we've got attack, decay, sustain, and release. And at the moment, this is controlling the amp or the volume envelope for each of our notes. So if we bring the attack time up, we can get a nice fade in. And we can switch over to the mod envelope, the modulation envelope. And to assign this, we need to go into the mod matrix over here we can select our target just by dragging one of the parameters around. And we can click on one of these source slots and pick, for example, our mod envelope. And then we can tell that modulation envelope how much it's going to affect the granular size on A. So there's loads of modulation capabilities. And we also have some extra LFOs, sine one, sine half, quarter. And I don't know if I'm missing this, maybe there's a secret menu somewhere that I've not seen, but it doesn't seem like you can change the rate of those LFOs. It seems like they're just synced to the tempo of our project, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it maybe would have been nice to have an extra LFO section in there. And then finally up in the top left-hand corner, we've got these three tabs here the play, motion, and trim. The play is what we're in right now. The motion allows you to record movements within the plugin itself, so you don't have to automate anything. We can just press record, play a note. Move A around like so, and then when we play a note again, you can see that very erratic movement that I recorded in is being played back we also have a trim feature where you can trim the sample down. It can be useful if you've got really, really long samples. It's maybe not as useful if you've already got a loop that you just want to play around with. So let's talk about how we can use this to make some interesting sounds. So I'm going to drag in my drifting pieces part here. I'm going to create a MIDI region. Draw out one big long note on C3 to begin with. Let's loop around this. So first of all, if we wanted to create a nice drone sound, we could change our mode to scrub. I'm going to bring the size up quite a bit so we get rid of that. That noisy kind of looping feel that you can hear in the bottom there. I'm going to bring the density up too. Bring the random time up as well. A little bit of the random pan. I'm also going to turn up the scrub jitter too. This is going to help reduce that repetitive looping effect that you sometimes get with looping audio. We can move this around. Now, one thing that we can do, we could go into our automation. I'm going to go into S Alchemy here, into the Perform tab, and we can use this position A to automate that position of our generator A. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna place some automation markers. I'm gonna put two pretty much on every beat. And then I'm gonna take each section here, each bar, sorry, not beat. I'm gonna move it up in this square shape like so. Let's just do something like that. This is going to move the position. Up and down our waveform. And we can just adjust these. Eventually find some positions that we like. essentially making a whole new sequence from this audio file and having that nice drone static effect from the granular synthesis. And once we've done this, we go into our clip, go ahead and move this up and down. We 
Oh, that last one's a bit jazzy. So there's another interesting way in which we can use this new sample alchemy plugin. Is it called sample alchemy? This is what I do a lot in Granulator 2 is to create really nice pad and key sounds using samples. Let's just mute these, create a new track. This time I'm going to drag the Irish flute into here. I want to find a loop that has just individual notes like this. So you can hear we've got individual notes in there. I could go for the scrub, I could go for the bow on this one as well if I wanted to. I'm going to pick scrub to begin with. Somewhere around here, that sounds good. Bring the scrub jitter up, the random time, the random pan a little bit too, and the density as well. Now bring the grain size up here, the size control, but you just need to be careful if you bring this up a little bit too high, it might spill over into some of the surrounding notes. And we could also add in extra generators, of course, too. Could change this into additive mode. Change it over to harmonic. Let's try spectral, actually. And you can get these lovely, warm, noisy pad sounds that would be quite difficult to program inside a synthesizer. So I made some chords before, I'm just going to drop it into this track. But if you're using this technique to create instruments, you need to check one final thing. Because of the way samplers work and granular synthesizers too, they have to assign the sample to a specific note. And then based on the note that you play, it can work out how much it needs to pitch the sample up and down by in semitones. And usually this is around C3 or C4 where it places that sample. So if your sample itself, the note that you are selecting isn't a C, then your instrument is gonna be out of tune with the rest of your project. So to do this, make yourself a MIDI region and draw a note of C. Then you wanna load the tuning plugin, the tuner plugin, sorry, I should say, and then play that note back. So you can see there, I'm playing a C, but the tuner which is what the pitch of our audio is coming out of the sample alchemy. This means that it's going to be out of tune with everything else. So what I can do to tune this back with our track is come up into the top right hand corner of our sample alchemy and change the root key here as I'm playing the sample. Let me just loop around this bit. So you can see we're reading around that C there, and I can also bring the root note up and down in cents too. You can see we're about minus 20, minus 10 cents away from being perfectly in tune. Nope. Be good if this change, wouldn't it? See, on average, it's hovering around that center C now. It's never going to be exactly on that zero point, but as long as it's close, it's going to be in tune with the rest of your instruments in your project. As I said, this does use the Alchemy engine from the synthesizer plugin, and you can actually convert this whole plugin into an Alchemy track if you wanted to. But this is just a much easier way to use this, a lot more user friendly than the one inside of Alchemy. I think personally anyway. There's going to be a lot more tutorials, breakdowns and things like this on our channel. So make sure you subscribe and also check out our website modulateonline.com. We're going to be posting up a sound design and synthesis video course soon, which will contain granular synthesis as well and a bunch of examples on how to make different synth types in loads of different synths. But thanks for watching the video and I'll see you next time. Don't want you, baby.